Welcome back. It is time for another post bag. Let's start with this one. It is screws for a total price of one US dollar. These are some PCB standoffs. Um, they're these plastic type standoffs. Let me get one out. Oh no, it is sealed. Oh no, it's not. These are a bit different in that these don't have a flat edge so you can stand them up um, and use some, well, some double sided tape or something. Usually there's some double sided tape already on them. But in this case, these are meant to go through a hole in the case and the, the case has to have a certain thickness and then you can mount your PCB like that. So no glue, just a hole in your case and a hole in your PCB and you're done. Next up, descriptionless. And these are breakout boards for a TQFP package with a lead spacing of 0.8 millimeters and it's for 32 pins up to 64 pins and on the other side this is also for a TQFP package in this case from 32 pins up to 100 pins and these have a lead spacing of 0.5 millimeters now these I bought for the new AVR 128DA chips I recently got from microchip and I was planning on doing it like dead box style but I found these and I thought this is maybe a better option although this one seems to have some damage across the board do they all have that? no this one doesn't so it's probably just this one because it was on top of the package so one of the next videos will be me soldering a 64 pin TQFP package onto this breakout board. Next one, labelless or descriptionless. See, they do have a description, but in the Netherlands, when it arrives, they put on their own sticker and they put it across the original label. And on that label, there's nothing else except my address. And then I can't read anything anymore about the package and as you can see I try to rip it off but it's pretty good adhesive so it won't come off so that's why most of my packages don't have a description they do but it's just not readable and they are some potentiometers these I use well not these I use on my mini amp and also the mini amp kit I use original Alps potentiometers these are stereo potentiometers with a switch so the on off switch is I don't know if you can hear that it has a really nice feel to it the original one and this one as well and I'm going to do some investigation into whether these will work in the same way the original ones does because the clones are a lot cheaper and will help to keep the cost of the kit down and I think the cheaper a kit is the more fun it is um, because if the quality is kind of the same um, I think this will be a good replacement by the way the number on here it's a B taper and it's a 10k pot they don't really look as nice as the original do I have an original here wait let me see All right this has been gathering some dust but you can clearly see this is the original and this is the clone they're slightly different first of all there's no straight edge there's the, the, the knob itself or the shaft is a bit different there's a slight color difference but they should have 
the same footprint the pins are a bit bent but they do have the same footprint yeah some investigation to do and maybe this is a good replacement and a good way to keep the cost down next one well these are not electronics related um, although they are this YouTube channel related I'm using my phone as a camera to shoot these post bag videos but for other shots I use my DSLR camera and I usually do manual focus and I like to use a technique that's called a focus pull in which you first start with your the subject you're filming out of focus and then tweak the focus until the subject you're looking for is in focus and that's a really nice effect now the ring on my camera that is used for focusing is a bit of a pain to operate and film at the same time All right so this is uh, my camera I'm using a well, it's an entry-level Canon where's the mark on this there it is it's the EOS 2000D and that's in Europe I believe and in the rest of the world it's called the Rebel 2 and I bought this just to start experimenting with a DSLR camera and this is the ring I was talking about and this controls the focus of the lens and the idea is that this will be mounted onto the focus ring so it would be easier to operate this ring I haven't uh, cut it to length yet I'm going to do that when I'm sure everything's working correctly now with this lever I have a bit more control over the focus and a bit finer control as well and you might be thinking wait don't these teeth supposed to be on the inside well no if you look at the focus ring itself it has some teeth and these teeth are there so you can mount an external device that will control the focus and because the teeth are also on this ring on the outside you still have the ability to use a well an automatic focus puller if you will and still have this on so that's why this is on the outside and not on the inside like this which at first might seem to be the way to mount it uh, but this, this is purely held in by friction and as you can see these teeth are of different sizes so that that wouldn't work anyway hopefully some very nice shots coming up next one it says push button switch and again a total price of one US dollar these are some levers um, and kind of have to self assemble them so this is supposed to be mounted like this horizontal and then by pulling this lever which is kind of hard to do on camera it pushes that lever down and on there this thing will be mounted so a bit like this and you can adjust the height of this no idea how to call this this push device and you can adjust the height by adjusting these two nuts and I have seen this being used in uh, programming jigs for I believe the unexpected maker uses one or used to use one for programming uh, I believe it was his tiny Pico I'm not sure and this is a way to clamp in something which is over here to well in my case I'm gonna use it as a programming jig as well to hold in a PCB to some pogo pins without manually having to keep putting force on it to keep making good contact so the next step is to design some kind of case or jig where this goes on top of and some pogo pins on the bottom so I can 
put a PCB in between. Next one. These are, well, more of the same, only from a different seller. And I wanted to do some comparison between sellers. Does this want to focus? Kind of does. These uh, are a bit different. They do have the same click. Different than the other ones, but more of the same. And the last one for today, LCD modules. It's kind of big. Right, let's start with the case. Now let's save the case for last and start with this one. It is a three and a half inch SPI TFT module and it uses the ILI 9488 driver. It is 320 pixels by 480 or well depends on how you hold it right. Could be 480 by 320. The model number is MSP3520 and this is with touch. Now in the box I think that's something similar from the same seller. This is a... I'm really tempted to leave it in the anti-static bag so I'm hoping this is not too reflective. It's a three and a half inch Raspberry Pi display and I'm not sure if this is the same size. Yeah, it's the same size only it's a bit different in that this comes with a um, what do you call it a stylus something one of these touch pens and I ordered these oh hello there I am and I ordered these because I was looking at a video Adam Welsh has done and I believe Arturo and it's about the free deck which is an open source variant of stream deck and I was thinking the way it was made with the OLED screens uh, although a very cost-effective way I was kind of wondering could it be done a little bit nicer but with a touchscreen so I went ahead and ordered a few these are from the same seller now these are not really that expensive and I think that uh, these could be a really nice upgrade to FreeDeck by using a TFT touchscreen instead of six OLED screens. And these are today's post bag items. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Standard post video watching rules apply, meaning the whole liking and subscribing thing. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.